For decades, the BBC has produced some of the best and most popular documentaries about our natural world, awakening generation after generation to remarkable biodiversity and showing what's at stake as our planet starts to warm. Frozen Planet 2 series is the sequel to the 2011 Frozen Planet series, thus continuing the legacy of BBC Earth programmes. The Minecraft education team has been thrilled to partner with BBC on a Frozen Planet 2 Minecraft experience. This is a series of five worlds that take the magic of Frozen Planet 2 on the screen and then the experience of an epic immersive Minecraft adventure. We want to provide you as a player with game changing learning experiences that help you understand and even solve some real world issues. Our goal is to build a better world with the power of play. Today we're going to visit a Minecraft Frozen Planet 2 world. And this is Frozen Peaks. In Frozen Peaks, we'll experience uh, and explore animals living in the Frozen Peaks, such as the high cask uh, chameleon and the golden eagle. And we'll hopefully start to have a develop an understanding of how they've adapted themselves to these and surviving these extreme conditions. I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Sarah Snowden. I'm the Minecraft Learning Centre Programme Manager in Wales. I'm also a Minecraft mentor, a global mentor and a Minecraft trainer as well. And I want to start this session off by explaining how the virtual classroom session will work today. OK, so I'm going to provide you with some information um, through screens like this and you know, you're going to have a presentation and we'll be using talking head slides as well. We'll be asking you learners lots of questions and you'll need to let your teachers know the answers to these questions. Now, teachers, this is where you come in. We're going to ask you to either put things into the Q&A panel sometimes or we're going to ask you to scan a QR code. So hopefully you can get your phones ready to start scanning a QR code and this will be on different slides so you can get your learners responses in and everybody will see it um, dynamically coming up on the screen as well. And obviously we're going to have some time exploring the Minecraft Frozen Planet World Frozen Peaks. I'm really pleased though that I've got somebody with me to help me today. It's a friend of mine and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, my name's Manon Watkins and I'm a classroom teacher here in Wales. I'm also a Minecraft trainer in one of the Minecraft learning centres and I'm also a Minecraft global mentor. So let's start by considering some of the things we're going to cover today. Well, that's a good idea, Manon. So we're going to learn today that adaptation over time enables animals to survive in particular environments. We'll also observe how some living things are adapted to survive in extreme conditions. We'll also understand how climate change is affecting the Earth's frozen peaks. And we'll understand how climate change is making survival for animals living at the Earth's frozen peaks increasingly more difficult. Gosh, this all sounds like a brilliant virtual classroom session to me but I think I know what might make this even better for the learners. But what's that, Sarah? Well, I think we've got a really special guest with us today and I'd like to introduce Alex. Uh, this is um, Alex Lancaster, uh, Lanchester. Alex is the producer of Frozen Planet episodes, uh, Frozen Planet 2, and he's worked for over 14 years for the BBC's Natural History Unit. He's got a passion to deliver groundbreaking stories and has taken him from the sewers of Bangkok, I believe, to the high peaks of the Himalaya. Um, now, learners, if you've got some questions that you'd like to ask Alex, please let your teachers know. And teachers, this is where we will ask you to quickly type those into the Q&A panel in the meeting so we can see them. So welcome, Alex. Hi, everyone. Good to have you with us. Um, we're absolutely thrilled actually that you could join us today. And I'm going to start off while we're waiting for some of the learners to put their questions in there by asking you a little bit about some of the amazing places that you've, well, you must have visited while you've been film, filming the Frozen Planet 2 series. So what was the most interesting, do you think? Oh, 
I was very lucky to go to so many interesting places. I think, um, you know, just to, to, to give a, a small sample, I, I traveled to the, the far east of Russia, to the Siberian forests um, to try and film tigers out there, which was a really long project. We went out there for weeks at a time, um, many, many times over three years to try and capture our, our sequence there with tigers. And it was super cold, minus 20 degrees. Um, and that was about as cold as I ever got. Um, but I also got, was lucky enough to go um, to Greenland, where we got to camp out on a glacier that we were filming. Uh, and that is a is, was a very kind of unique and strange experience because the whole of this sheet of ice is moving beneath you. So you're you're kind of sleeping on this kind of big monster of ice that's kind of groaning and moving as it's as it's kind of working its way through the landscape. So that's a different kind of waterbed then. <laughs> exactly, yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> that must have been very cold to try and sleep somewhere like that though. It's really cold and the funny thing is is that when you um, you have to move your tent every few days because the heat of where you've been lying in the tent melts the ice beneath you so you end up so you end up going into a into a dip in the oh, middle wow. so that every few days you you have to get your tent move it a few a few meters to the left so that you kind of you don't just keep getting sort of slowly sinking down into the uh, into the ice below oh gosh <laughs> you don't want to end up in the water oh yeah. um, so what would you say has been the hardest thing for you to actually film well, um, I think um, I mentioned the tigers. The tigers were very difficult um, to to film. Um, from a kind of um, on my, you know, the kind of on my body in terms of like the kind of hardships we went through. I did go up to um, to do some filming in uh, Pakistan in the uh, in the mountains in Kashmir there, where um, we we travelled up to seven thousand meters up into the mountains, which was you get this high altitude effect um, where you have a, a lack of oxygen on your body and it can cause you to feel really quite ill indeed. Um, but I would say equally our, you know, we, we another tough thing is um, our eagle sequence that um, I think hopefully you guys will get to sort of experience a little bit through the game today, but that was another tough one where it, we had to be there at the right moment for these eagles that were hunting goats in the, in the um, European Alps. And that took us months and months and months and trekking up into the mountains and just all with this hope that, that we'll catch this very brief moment of that moment where the um, eagle attacks a goat on a on a cliff face. That was that was certainly one of the hard ones. So you must go through a lot of filming before you actually get the bit that you really want. <laughs> a lot. Yes. Yes. yes okay. Yeah. <laughs> So um, what kind of technologies have you used to kind of capture some of these amazing images that we see in Frozen Planet 2? Well, we always try and push push the boundaries in terms of what we can do with technology in order to try and kind of bring audiences um, new experiences, new angles um, on behaviour. On Frozen Planet uh, 2, we there were two main technologies that we used. Uh, one was racer drones, um, and that is, these are drones that fly very, very fast, 100 over 100 miles oh. an hour and um, we use them in the frozen peaks episode to to capture an avalanche so the drone would fly alongside the avalanche they were so fast they could fly in front of the avalanche looking back at it as it came towards the camera um, and that is uh, that's kind of the latest drone technology we used on that. And even better, we didn't even crash any um, <laughs> that time around, which you think would be a given if you're filming an avalanche. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that we did is that, you know, a lot of these things uh, and that you might end up learning and experiencing about um, climate change as well is that they happen over a long period. They happen, these changes are happening gradually, but, you know, they're all going one way, uh, it tends to be so that they, you know, the, as glaciers melt, <clears throat> you get to see the dramatic. If you go and stand in front of a glacier on a day, you wouldn't really notice any change. But if you take a picture of that glacier every day, you'll see that slowly that will change. And that was a technique that we used a lot on the series. Um, and we really pushed the realms of that. So we had uh, we had satellites up in space that were targeted to make time lapses of these glaciers. We traveled high up into the Andes to put up these cameras and they would take a photo every day for two years. Um, and that was a, a technology that is an old form of filming, but we were trying to push the limit of it. So taking it to really cold places, you know, giving you new perspectives by going up into satellites. Um, 
and that was a, a really big part for us because we really wanted to show and demonstrate to the audience that how this world is changing. Wow. Okay. So you, you've obviously had to change your skills over the time you've been working on these programmes as well, then I presume. You yes, you, you kind of you have to um, you have to learn on the job uh, yeah. a little bit. And I'd say that the, the, the technology when I first started out um, making wildlife programs, it was on it was on film. So you had to load um, you know, film into cameras, which probably seems a really alien concept now to anyone who's got a camera or a smartphone now that you had this whole other aspect of um, filming. And now, you know, we travel into the into the field with um, digital cameras that can film for hours and hours and hours and really high resolution so you end up going in with laptops and drives plugged in and where you know as I said not to hark back to the old days but where we used to just go with a roll of film and um, uh, and that was about it really. <laughs> OK, well, we've got um, a few questions coming in now from the, the learners. So I think the first one we've got here is how long does it take to film an episode? So Frozen Planet 2, we were in production for four years um, and I would say that three of those years is, is dedicated to filming um, and it takes that long because uh, for two reasons. One is that um, you can only often these pieces of behaviour that were there to film only happen at certain times of year. So um, you've only got one shot a year to do it and if you don't get it then you want another go to, to maybe try again the following year um, and then the other thing is sometimes it just takes that long to organize some of these because you know if you're going to Antarctica for six weeks to film a story it takes months and months of preparation uh, and working out the logistics working out um, how you get there all that kind of stuff um, so we, it, we need a long time to make these shows um, so when you say four years, is that for the whole series? That's not per epi that's episode. For, that's for the whole series, but all the episodes will be running alongside each other. So I would say that every episode takes that length of time right. um, and um, you'll be doing a few trips each year to kind of to, to, to capture your stories and that then works out. Uh, and once your filming's finished, you then have a period of time where you put everything together in the edit uh, and that takes a few months of time and then you then you have all the music and uh, all the other all the other bits that you kind of want to add to your program to make it um, as powerful as possible. So um, yeah, it's a long process. Okay. okay. Um, right. We've been asked, what's your favourite animal? Oh, good question. That's a good question. It, well, I feel obliged that it should be a frozen animal, but I will tell <laughs> you, I will tell you that actually, in, you know, the the reality is my favourite animal is an eye eye, um, which is an animal that lives in Madagascar, and I don't know if anyone has, knows of it, but it has um, a very, it has one really extremely long finger uh, that it uses to to hunt and finger um, for grubs out of um, rotten bits of wood it has these massive big eyes and it looks like a gremlin and um, they are by far my favorite animal but i would say on frozen planet um the, the animal i love the most was the chameleon uh, which lives out on, on mount kenya again i think it's part of the game is, um, yeah. yeah and um i just love chameleons they just they're so adorable and um how their eyes move in different directions and they're ridiculously long tongue they're just very <laughs> they're very charismatic animals and i've yeah. got a, very, a soft spot for them <laughs> okay and we've got another question is that um how did you actually get a job working on frozen planet <laughs> Well, when I um, before I started um, uh, working for the BBC, uh, I did a I went to university. I did a d degree in a subject called zoology, which is specialising in animal um, understanding animals and um, their behaviour. And then I really wanted to work in TV and wanted to work in media to do with to conservation and wildlife. Um, so I spent a long time applying for um, for jobs, and I got a job as an, um, an assistant in the in the field. And I've kind of over the years I've gradually worked my way up the 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 ladder. But when I first joined the BBC, Frozen Planet One was in uh, production, and I remember kind of walking down the corridors and seeing all these people get ready to head off to Antarctica to do all these really exciting things. And I thought to myself, God, one day that would be amazing if I managed to get to do or to be involved in a project like that. So I was uh, over the moon when, when it happened and I got to work on Frozen Planet 2. Um, previously, I've made quite a few series about mountains. So that's sort of an area that I've um, developed a little bit of a speciality 
um, with, which I'm, I'm slightly regretting now because it's really hard to find animals. <laughs> I should have been more sensible and made a speciality about filming lions on the uh, in the grass plains. But yes. Um, well, I'm sure you are... can be a chameleon and change. Into the well, there you go. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And I know we've got one question that some of Manon's learners actually asked, and that's how cold does it actually get? Or how cold have you actually got, got while you've been? So I think minus 20 is as cold as it's got for me. Um, but it's really interesting because they say uh, a lot of people that go and do um, these expeditions to these really cold places, they say that um, they still um, do a lot of the training they do in the UK um, because even if they're going to Antarctica or the Himalayas or all these places because you there's a kind of different type of cold you have the dry cold that you get in some of these cold places but also you have wet cold that we have here so um this is i feel like this is reassuring for for all of us that live in the uk but they said that um uh, when you get wet cold it's the worst and so therefore if you can deal with that um then you can you can deal with dry cold and i would say that was my that was my take as well it was it was it felt very extreme, but I also feel like I felt that cold in Scotland or in Wales where I've been wet and outside and cold, yeah. you know, <laughs> and so um, it was it was it was tough, but um, but not but but not no, not hugely different from what we experience here in the UK. Well, it's been absolutely amazing having you with us, Alex, and thank you for giving us this time. I'm sure the learners have in enjoyed it as well. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Manon to carry on for a little bit um, with this next section. Thank you, Alex. Brilliant. Okay, yes, guys. thank you Thanks. so much, Alex, for joining no us today. Bye bye. I bye. Bye. I found that so interesting, and I'm sure you learners did too. So we're going to ask you a question now before we get started. Uh, what parts of the planet do you think is cold all the time? So think about the position of the Earth in relation to the sun and the rays that emanate from the sun. What do you think? Let your teachers know your answers. OK, so you can see this animation here of this globe moving. Think, where do you think the coldest parts of the planet are? So teachers, we've got a QR code for you to scan and type in your learners responses now so we'll give you some time to scan that qr code let's see what kind of answers we can get which parts of the planet is cold all the time I don't know what parts of England are cold all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We've got sun here in Wales today, which is nice. <laughs> OK, we've got some typing. That's good news. Ah, Iceland, yes. Yeah. The name kind of gives it away there, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah. does, it does. Where else is it cold all the time, you think? I oh, know somebody else typing in there now. Brilliant, Russia, Antarctica, Greenland. Excellent answers, yes. Oh, North Pole, yep. Yeah. Yes, definitely. OK, if we've got the North Pole, what do you think about the other pole? Uh -huh. <laughs> Guess what that could be. I bet we've got lots of learners shouting answers there. I bet it'll be the teachers that are having to type these oh, in. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but brilliant, some great answers there. And you're right, in places like the Arctic Ocean, Antarctica, and even the tops of high mountains, it's cold year round. 
and frozen water in, the, in these areas can take many forms such as snow, ice flows, glaciers, sea ice or permafrost. So what do you think lives there then, Monon? Ah, good question. So learners, do you have any ideas of what animals live in these areas? Let your teachers know if you do. Let's see what kind of answers we can get here. What kind of animals live in these cold places? OK, another QR code to, to scan in there. We're getting some answers through. Brilliant. Penguins, whales, seals. Brilliant. Penguins, yes. Yeah. Well done. Can anybody think of anything bigger than a penguin? Polar bears, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, again, some good answers coming up. Whales, yeah. seals, yeah. Arctic fox. Oh, that's an interesting yes. one. Yeah, yeah again really good answers there so over time many of these animals have had to kind of adapt uh, to these extreme environments they're now living in so examples of ad adaptation are things like thick fur um, hibernation it's kind of like a, you know characteristic as well coloration of the coats as well to absorb the heat and today we're going to consider animals that live at the frozen peaks and I'm going to share with you a short video of an animal that you might not have even considered living in such a location. It's the high cask chameleon. This is a picture of the high cask chameleon and I'm going to just share this video with you now. With her body temperature still only 5 degrees Celsius, the chameleon becomes more mobile and climbs up to bask in the sun. Her skin darkens, enabling her to absorb the sun's heat more quickly. She is pregnant and soon her temperature reaches 20 degrees Celsius which gives her the energy she needs to give birth. Most chameleon species lay eggs, but here it's too cold for an egg to develop in the open. So she produces live young. just an hour for her to give birth to six baby comedians. One of the advantages of life on the frozen peaks is that there are fewer predators here and less competition for food. But there's a reason why comparatively few reptiles live in the high mountains. As the sun sets, the temperature falls to below zero in a matter of minutes. The babies must act fast. To escape the nightly freeze, they need the cover of thick vegetation. A young chameleon caught out in the cold will quickly lose its ability to move and may well die. Most, however, react instinctively and find shelter as quickly as they can.
can see that why that was one of Alex's favourite animals there. But did you know there's actually over 150 uh, different species of the chameleon in the world? And the high cask chameleon is usually found living at high altitudes, that kind of like in, in mountains, at locations such as Mount Kenya. Now, Mount Kenya is located about 10 miles south of the equator, and it's the second highest mountain in Africa. Uh, its highest peaks actually reach over 5,000 metres tall, so that is pretty tall. Wow, fascinating. So I thought we were going to investigate animals that live in the Arctic or the Antarctic. Well, yes, you might think that because we're saying it's the um, frozen planets, but although we're most definitely going to look at very cold areas of our planet, it might surprise you to know that not, you know, that even just 10 miles from the equator, uh, which actually receives the most direct sunlight all year round, some higher altitudes like Mount Kilimanjaro and the Andes have glaciers there, so they are very, very cold. The highest point on or near the, uh, the equator uh, are the mountains I mentioned, and these are only like the snowy points located directly on top of the equator. So it's a notable exception to a usually kind of hot environment. It's humid and kind of in this climate area there, but because these mountains are so tall, they actually are freezing up there. Now we've just started to look at how a mountain um, creature is unique to the frozen worlds and some have to, some of them are very, very extraordinary animal, animals and they have to overcome, you know, crushing cold conditions to be able to live there. That's fascinating. So learners, I would like you to think about the video we've just shared and I'm going to ask you a few questions. So again, teachers, please scan the QR code and type in your pupils' answers to these questions. So the first question we'll ask is what was happening in the video we just saw? So have a think, what was happening in the video? And these things we'll think about as well when we're playing the game. Think about what these creatures are doing, how they're surviving, how they can survive in these harsh conditions. But what was happening in this video? Yes, the chameleon was climbing trees. What were they doing up the tree? Mm, why were they climbing to the top of the tree? Well, they're a chameleon, not a, not exactly a lizard. I know they look very similar, they're yeah. slightly different though. Another also coming in. To get warm, to yes. Get warm. Yes. Closer to the sun to warm their bodies. Brilliant. Okay. Some brilliant answers there. Okay, okay. so next question we have, Sarah. What surprised you? So watching that video, what surprised you? I know what surprised me when I first watched this. So we've got an answer coming in. Yeah, that, yeah. that's exactly what <laughs> surprised me as well. Having a baby up in a tree is, is a very unusual place. Yeah. Um, I've got another one coming along there. Eating spiders, right? Animal eggs. Yes, yeah, so they, they're not yeah. actually born as a, an egg out of the chameleon. They're, they give birth to live young. Um, so they are quite unusual because they are part of the kind of the, the reptiles that would normally be eggs, but chameleons actually have live young, which is, is very, very different. Mm. It surprised me how many babies she had. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot there, yeah. 
OK, got another question for you. So what environmental changes does the chameleon face? Challenges, sorry, not changes. What challenges? I mean, it mentioned something could happen if she didn't move fast. Remember when the sun was going down, what did you have to do? A few coming in now, yeah. Temperature changes, need to find shelter, excellent. Yes, OK, so we've got some on the ball learners out there. Mm -hmm. So again, brilliant answers. And we've got another question coming up for you. So how does the high caste chameleon survive these extreme conditions? What are they able to do to be able to you know, live in these cold areas. You're going to need to know this before we go into the yes, Minecraft world. Yes, definitely. I'm going to help you if you know the answers to this. I get the other fingers coming. <laughs> What are chameleons well known for? Yes, changing colour, exactly. Okay, some very, very brilliant answers in there. Okay, so, well, it's quite a bit of information that you've learned, learners have kind of got to know about the high cast chameleon. And I'm just going to give you a few more amazing facts. And this is going to help you when we get into the Minecraft, which we're going to go into it in very, very soon. So I'll just give you a few more facts about this chameleon. So um, the high cast chameleon is, ca is carnivorous. That means it's feeding on a diet of insects and spiders. And they have an amazing ability to use uh, to catch these insects and spiders. You can probably see it in the picture there. All right, they've got a shooting tongue. It actually goes out twice the length of their body and they can, you've got a kind of special suction part on the end of it, it's like a cup of the end of the tongue and it stick, the prey sticks to that. Now, the chameleon is actually near the bottom of the food chain and it means that the high cask chameleon has a range of predators including birds and snakes. So they have to be really careful when they're out in the open, um, you know, for what could be out there trying to eat them. Now, like all chameleons, they have bulging eyes and they're capable of looking in different directions at the same time. So that's going to be helpful. Again, when you get into the game, you're going to need to be looking all over because this is very useful looking out for prey and predators. Now, one of the most amazing characteristics of the chameleon is his ability to change colour. And we've already had somebody answer that as well, but it helps the chameleon with a number of its needs, not least allowing the, uh, the high cast chameleon to be able to respond to changes in temperature. So when it's high up in those frozen peaks, it needs to change its colour depending, you know, how cold it's getting, etc. So I think it's time for us to use this knowledge that we've gained so far and start to immerse ourselves in the Minecraft Frozen Planets world and learn more about these high cast chameleons. Brilliant. So teachers, can you make sure your learners are following along and that they are able to open the world? So the first thing we need to do is click on the main landing page, click on play. And you'll see secondly here, we need to click on view library from the dashboard. And then you'll see in the search box in the top right hand corner, if you can type in there frozen peaks. And then number four here, you can see it brings up the frozen peaks tile. So then we need to click on create world button on the right hand side of the window. So that's the best way to to access this world. OK, so we'll just give you a minute to kind of get in there. The teachers can help the learners get along, make sure they get the world opened up.
And once you've got the world opened, this will be your spawn point in the world. OK. And you'll notice there's a little message at the top that says just at the top of the screen, it says it's better if we're in third person view. So at the moment we're in first person view, so we need to be able to change to third person view. So to do this, if you're using a keyboard, all you need to do is press F5 and you can toggle through the three perspectives. So F5, maybe some of you need to press function and F5. And then if we if I press this once, you'll see I've changed perspective like this. OK, and if I press F5 again, I've gone to another different perspective, but we want that third person. So I'm going to toggle through like this. But if you're on a touch device, then you will need to pause the game. So if we press escape or we'll press that pause game on a touch device and select the settings button. And once you're in the settings area, you'll need to scroll down until you see the video button, which is here on the left hand side. And once you press on the video button, you will see the camera perspective option here. So drop this menu down and you can see three different perspectives that you can choose from and you need to choose the third person back for the best experience in this world. OK, and then we can go back into the world. So this is third person back. So again, on a keyboard, it's that F5 button on a touch device. You need to go to the settings. OK, so we can see we're now viewing the world from a third person back perspective and I'm going to walk towards the door and open it. I'm going to right click and go through that door. Oh, I can see the sun coming up over the mountains there. Hopefully you've all reached this moment. Let me know if you can't hear it. We know there's no sound there, Manon. OK. Every continent on Earth has such high snow fields. And each has its own community of animals that have adapted in their own way to the crushing conditions that come with the cold. It's hardly the place where you would expect to find a cold-blooded reptile, the high-cusped chameleon. This female has survived the night's freezing temperatures by allowing both her metabolism and her heart rate to drop significantly. Now, in the morning, she needs to eat, but it's so cold she can't move her legs. Oh, right. OK, so we're in the chameleon. Oh, so we are a chameleon in the game then. And we have those instructions to follow. OK, hopefully managed to read those. OK, so as a chameleon, we need to journey towards that beacon to find something to eat. OK, but we're going to need to keep an eye on our temperature. Oh, OK. Uh, and because remember, when it gets too cold, we need to change our colour to warm up us back up. So change your colour to black and ah. use the items in your hot bar to change the colour. OK, so we need to be careful. As you just saw, there's a bird searching for us and to avoid that bird. Like, oh, not like that. Well, we need to change the colour to match the surrounding blocks and stay still until it's past you. OK, let's get our head around this. OK, now remember we gave you some facts about the high cast chameleon uh, being the, near the bottom of that food chain. So it has has or more to the point now that we're a chameleon we have a range of predators that are going to be after us as well including birds and snakes remember so be careful on this journey 
change your colour to keep warm and avoid those predators. OK, so let's get through this together and see if we can provide any tips for you as long the way as we play this through. So we need to make sure we're staying still when a bird sees us and change our colour. And you can see now the bird is looking for me and I'm getting low in temperature. So I'm using number one on my hot bar to change to black and you can see my temperature going up like that. So I'm going to start moving. And I'm going to hide in here. The bird is coming, so I'm selecting four to change colour and to stay still. And the bird didn't see me, so I'm going to venture further. You'll notice as the temperature drops, the slower I can move. And I'm going to stay still. And the bird didn't see me. OK, I'm going to carry on. And I'll just I watch your see. temperature again. Let's press number one on my hot band select. I'm now black so I can warm myself Ah, up. but the bird's coming again so <laughs> be careful. Are you going to have to quickly change colour? Oh, just in time. Wow. <laughs> so it takes a while to, to get your head around the different controls in the hot bar, but it's a matter of being patient and thinking about what colour we need to be. And you can see my temperature is getting low again. Yeah. I'm going to press number one and press select. And I can see the temperature going up. Going to move forwards now. Don't forget gonna... that chameleon's looking around all the time. Is he looking for any they danger? Are. I can see the shadow of the bird approaching. I'm going to stay still. Bird didn't see me. Great. Brilliant. So that is a key point, isn't it? Keeping yes. still when the bird's out. Right. My temperature is getting low. I'm going to change to black quickly. See if I can get that temperature, but oh, I do see that bird coming yeah, again. Be careful. I'm going to quickly change colour and stay still. We're nearly there. And he's got me. He's oh, got me. No. And I'm back to the beginning. So let's try and work this again. OK, now don't worry, learners. This will probably happen to you a few times. It or will. you might even beat man onto that uh, beacon. Who knows? <laughs> we shall see. And he's coming for me again. Uh, stay still. So it is a juggling game between ke keeping warm enough and making sure you're well hidden. I can see the shadow of the bird approaching. And my temperature is getting low. Oh. Which one shall I do? Cut temperature up and then quickly change it. Hide myself. Oh. The bird didn't see me. Okay. okay, let's see how far I can get this time. I'm sure some of you managed to reach the beacon already. If you have think. reached the beacon, just wait there for yeah. us. We're going to catch you up. Some and the of bird you. is coming. I'm going to change colour to camouflage myself. Oh. We were nearly there last time. I think the bird is coming. And I'm getting low. The bird is coming. We can see that shadow and that noise. <laughs> warns us. I'm going to try get a little bit closer carefully before that bird comes again. Now you could take different paths. You might not be taking the same yes. path as those, but uh, it's just a matter of getting over to that beacon. OK. Ah, oh, fantastic. So at last okay. we have found some yummy food because we're there. Um, we're going to be able to eat. Now, if you've got to that same point as well, I want you to please pause the game there before we go any further. And we just want to consider that bird that was pursuing us in the game. So I'm just going to see. You should see the screen coming up in a moment. There, OK. All right, so this is obviously an eagle. So what do you think it means when someone refers to someone as being eagle eyed? Think about looking at the eyes. What do you think it's something that a saying that people have the eagle eyed? I'm going to put up another QR code. So teachers, if you can scan that QR code put your learners answers in there. So 
What do you think it means when you refer to as being eagle eyed? Remember that chameleon had to be kind of looking around. Someone might say like uh, the police officer was keeping an eagle eye on the suspect. Oh, you need to watch the puppy with an eagle eye. Good eyesight. Yes, that's a good one. Yes. And they got to be very, very sharp as well. So it's a good answer. We're going to move on. OK, so although uh, similar in size, scientists suggest that it's it's up to four times sharper than the human eye. Now that's just amazing. If you think there's a, a kind of about the same size, but four times sharper, they have great color vision and they can spot prey up to two miles away. So it's no wonder they were coming down and if you were getting caught in the game, the chameleon was being eaten by the eagle. That's because they've got a very sharp eye. Now, the golden eagle is a predator at the top of the food chain, preying on small mammals such as hares, <coughs> small foxes even, and as well as the kind of decaying flesh on a dead animal, which is pretty gross, really. <coughs> oh. Did you know, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'm coughing. Go on. <laughs> Did you know that the golden eagle's wingspan is known to reach over two metres and soaring high over open landscapes? It holds its wings in like a V shape and uses air currents to maintain its height. And they build their nests in, in large cracks high up in the cliffs and the mountain peaks. Right, so not only has it got excellent colour vision, it's got an extraordinary ability to focus on unsuspecting prey on or actually near the ground. It enables them to hunt with ease so they can get about quite easily. Now, hunting during the day, the golden needle moves swiftly using its powerful feet and those large sharp talons to attack and carry its prey. Now, again, we're telling you this for a reason because you're going to need to know this for when we go on in our journey in this Minecraft world. Now, it, those sharp hooks um, they, on the beak as well enables them to tear flesh off its prey so they can tear anything up. So let's carry on our journey in the Minecraft frozen pigs and see what additional information we can find out about this particular eagle. So if you've escaped the game, you go back and press play in your world and we'll get back into the frozen peeps world and we're going to see more of those amazing eagles now. So hopefully you can manage to get back into the world. It takes a moment to load up. I think we're going to have another opening animation, aren't we? And the, yes, yeah. we are. And I suspect we're going to change what animal we are going to be. I think we are. I'm excited to find out more. Oh, we've, we've been hunted. Maybe we're going to be the hunter this time. Ooh. It's taking its time to load back up. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of information on that screen, but we actually want to just get back into the world. Thank we you. Do. <laughs> and it's building the terrain. OK. God. All right. So I think we're going to. I think we're going to be in as an eagle. I think we're. I think you're right there, Sarah. And uh, to see what our goal is this time. They have oh, no. a three-week-old chick. It needs to be fed several times a day. To do that, both parents have to hunt. 
Yet, even in spring, few animals live up here in the high mountains. And finding prey is not easy. But chamois, a kind of mountain goat, are here, and they are giving birth. When eagles hunters appear, they coordinate their approach. Okay, there. we are an eagle, yes, and we our goal is to feed the chick. So to achieve that, we need to hunt for chamois, then try to grab it by flying into it. And once you've caught it, press jump as fast as you can to fly back to your nest. Okay, okay let's give it a go, because remember, they've got very sharp talons, haven't they, to be able to get hold of things, and then the beaks can tear the flesh apart. So we're going to start Fly flying around. around and we need to look, watch out for messages as well on the screen. Yes. So this is our nest here where we just flew from. Let's try and find some of this chamois. I can see some moving around here. Oh, behind. good eyesight. Yes, OK. He's so, lied there. I think, yes, I am. So we're, I'm pressing forward, W, to move forward. And then, do you remember what we had to press to to pick them up, Sarah? Oh, uh, well, we had to press jump, didn't we? To fly we back. Did. Okay, let's you had to fly into them, didn't you? Fly into them, them and press jump. And it takes a while to get your head around this. And to, they're quite quick animals. These. Let's see if I can get higher up. And we'll try and grab this line like flying here. into it, flying into it. Let's try once more. Let's get up high. And then we can aim for this one. There's a few here. I've got one. Oh, that's it. OK, so those talons have got hold of it. Don't drop it. You're pressing jump. It'll take you back to feed those chicks. There so keep There's pressing the nest. jump. The nest is nearby. Oh no, don't drop it. Don't, and drop, don't it. drop it. I've done it. Oh, good. Oh, well, it must have been hungry that. Uh, so we've managed to feed our chick, but we're going to have to hunt again. Round two. Oh, <laughs> they must be very greedy, these chicks. They must be. So think of getting the hang of this now. Let's okay. fly up high. Remember, use your eagle eyes, look out. Look for those goats. There's lots of high peaks here, isn't there? And I can see down below there we've got some goats. Oh, here. movement there, yeah, yeah. Is it fly That's, into it? There we go. That's it. You've got another one. Keep hold. And you'll see those arrows. They're showing where the nest is located. So I need to move around, and we can see the nest here. And let's land. There we go. Oh, that must be most food, enough food now, Sheila, this time. So we've managed to feed the chick, but we'll have to hunt again. Wow, third round. I hope you learners are keeping up. In fact, I know probably some of you have be, already have done this round. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're more eagle eyed than me. Let's see. Behind here Back again. Down, down, ah, down to the yes. left. Yeah, yeah. I can see some down here. Let's see if I can Does get fly right straight into it straight away. Oh, he's escaped oh. me. Let's try flying up again. It's a good technique to Imagine go up and Imagine how hard jump. this is for eagles. See why they have to have good eyesight and why yes. they have to have those sharp talons as well. Let's try, I can spot one. I they must be one. very strong. Hey, hey okay. got one. Pressing sure jump, make sure I don't drop him. Yeah. And oh, it's riddling. He is wriggling. Nearly there. Don't tell us he's going to be hungry again. <laughs> ah. ah, got a new area coming up. So it's loading up now. I wonder where this is going to take us to. Ah, OK. OK, so we've got to change perspective again back to first person for this part of the game. OK, so 
remember how to do that. It's function and F5 on my device. It could be just F5 on your device. And we need to switch to first person view. So this is what first person view looks like. Remember, you can toggle in the settings if you're on a touch device until you reach the first person view. OK, once you're in the, the settings area, do you remember? We'll show you quickly settings. And you need the video on the left hand side and you can select which perspective you want here and we need the first person awesome. and we can go back. And this is how we normally walk around in Minecraft, isn't it? As yes. Well? Yes. OK, so let's see what we're going to have to get up to in this part. Lots of little blue diamonds around. Perhaps that'll come clear what that's for. Okay. Uh, so we had some instructions just at the beginning when we when we ah, jumped in, didn't we? They flashed on the screen. They did. What if you press um, chat so the talk comes up? Um, so that that work? No. no. Oh no, that's not. Oh, there we go. There, there that's is. it. Yes. Okay. okay. So welcome to the Golden Eagle game. Thank you. Right, you, your goal is to feed. Oh, we've done that. We've done that. Uh, ah, here we go. Right. Um, we've been equipped with a camera and a journal. Our job is to document this area for environmental research. Take photos of the animals and the locations listed in the journal. Then take your camera and interact and take pictures. And if you take a photo in the correct spot, then a new entry will be unlocked in the journal. Right, OK, so we're going to be researchers, aren't we? So our job is to yeah. show you there's lots I, of information. Yeah, I love taking photos, so this will be great. I'm going to I've got a camera in my hot bar. I can see that and a journal as well. So we need to look for these. That must be what diamonds. those little green yes. diamonds are. They must be the locations. I've got you. OK, I bet Alex wish he had green diamonds in locations. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful, don't get too close to the animals or you might scare them off. OK, so that means there's an animal nearby. Let's just creep forwards a little bit. Can we see anything? <gasps> yes. Can you see that up ahead? See some movement there. I'm going to get my camera out ready. You have, you <gasps> have got eagle eyes. <laughs> I don't want to get too close. So I'm going to take a photo of that chameleon. I think it's a high cast chameleon. Ah, a new journal page has been unlocked. So let's, in my hot bar, I'm going to select that journal. And here, yeah. yes, we've got high cast chameleon. The high cast chameleon's diet includes small insects and spiders. It captures its prey by extending its tongue. It's capable of extending its tongue more than a complete body length. Brilliant. So we we did we've learned all about this amazing creature today, haven't we? So let me choose something else from my hot bar just so I can see now. I'm going to go towards these diamonds here. Don't forget, something. it's not just animals. It might be vegetation and things like yes. that. We'll take pictures of. Let's cross over this icy river. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I can feel the chill. I can too. Right. Oh, again, be careful. Don't get too close to the animals or you might scare them off. So let's get a little bit closer here. Can we see anything? What's that over there? Oh, there it's in the chameleon. Mm. And there? it's changing colour. Can you see? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's take a photo. New journal page has been unlocked, so let's go to the journal. Camouflage. So chameleons can change their colour to hide from predators. Additionally, during morning hours, it may be seen basking in the sunlight, almost completely black in colour to capture heat energy from the sunlight. Fantastic. OK, let's move on ahead. I can see some more diamonds over here. OK, 
Okay. Is gone. Yeah, is it this glacier? Let's let's get our camera out. It's gonna take some photos. Yeah. Uh oh. A new journal page um, has been unlocked. Uh, a melting, melting glacier. Yeah, right. So glaciers are large sheets of slowly moving snow and ice that form on land. Warmer temperatures cause glaciers to melt faster than they can accumulate new snow. Wow. Okay. Let's head back. Oh. Those arrows are pointing upwards. What animal can oh. we see up here? It's I the think eagle. It's that eagle. Let's take a photo. A new journal page has been unlocked. The golden eagle. So the golden eagle is one of the best known birds of prey in the northern hemisphere. It's the most widely distributed species of eagle and golden eagles use their ability and speed combined with powerful feet and massive sharp talons to snatch up prey as we saw in the game earlier. OK, have we got any more? Yes, we do. All the oh, way up man. there. Oh, my goodness. Let's have a little sprint. Let's hope you're all managing to to find those locations and those animals in the classroom. It doesn't matter if you've done them in a different order, just no. as long as you get your research done. That's all that's important. I've got lots of climbing to do here. Oh, yes. I don't think I can climb as well as those goats. <laughs> Maybe it's a goat we're going to find, do you reckon? Oh, don't get too close. There's something up there. And this ice, it's very slippy. It's a job to climb. I can see something right up there. I think, is that an eagle's nest, do you think? Ah, oh, it might be the chicks in the nest. It could be. I can't quite get close enough. Let's see. Not going to... Oh, it's a pity we can't fly. <laughs> ah, ah, got it. I think there we go. We've got that eagle's nest. Let's see. Yes, golden yes. eagles build their large nests high off the ground in places like high cliffs or in tall trees. The eagles usually return to the same nests each year. And we did have a message saying that we've completed our research and to head back to the research centre. So that green diamond there. Back ah, to our research station. Okay. Hand our information in, show them what we've found. It's been a brilliant adventure. Am I going to be able to get back? Oh, we've got some stairs here. Yes, we do. OK, researcher. OK, let's see what he's got to say. Hello, I see you gathered all of the research material. Can you give it to me? Yes, I think we've taken all the pictures they need at this point. And let's give our photos. So uh, he has some more information for us too. So as you've seen, animals like the golden eagle and the chameleon have adapted in remarkable ways to face the challenges of the frozen peaks where they live. As the temperature of the planet warms, these animals may face hard, more hardships. In some places, golden eagles have had to adapt to migrate in sync with the animals that they prey upon. And they're unable to shift the timing of their migrations to, because of the changes in the climate. So crucially, glaciers, which melt and contribute water to the ecosystem, are retreating fast in mountainous regions around the world due to higher temperatures. And this is impacting the animals and plants that depend on the meltwater for survival. So it's, it's good to know people all over the planet are working together to cloud down the rate our climate change is changing and you can help too. So use your voice to talk to your family, school or community about the problems we're facing and raise awareness about the, the positive actions that they can take to limit climate change. Together, we can make a difference. I just hadn't realised how much this was affecting other parts of the world. 
Yes, yes. And we would encourage you to go back into the world and read through the journal. It's got lots of information on um, what is happening to the animals, the plants and the landscape in the frozen peaks due to climate change. OK, so we really hope that you, this virtual session and the frozen planet Minecraft world has helped you to understand the struggles and the triumphs that some of these animals that live in the frozen peaks. And we would really encourage you to do some more research about this. Some of the ways that our planet Earth has been changing against the backdrop of, warming, of a warming world, for example, the shrinking uh, sea ice, the Arctic is not the only sign of climate change, but also causing the planet to warm more quickly. This is because more sunlight is being absorbed by the darker ocean rather than being reflected back into space. Learners, how does this information about the climate change make you feel? Let's take a quick poll on your feelings now, just to get an idea of how you're all feeling about this. So teachers, please scan your QR code and select the main emotions your learners are feeling about the climate change. So we can get some of those up in there and we can see how everybody's feeling about this. I hope none of you are pleased by the climate change. Yeah, I think sadden's a, a good point, a good way. Upset, that's, yes. Yeah, I think that, that's probably the, the three strongest uh, feelings that any would have. Yes makes me feel angry as well and de determined to do something to to help for, to change yes because it's it's no point in just being upset we need to think yes. about what we can actually do yeah okay so your emotions can be used uh, for positive actions and we would really encourage you to research good news stories about the efforts that people around the world are making to help uh, reverse the climate change trend Teachers, perhaps you could consider setting up like a climate cafe in school as a way of empowering learners to take action on climate change. It could provide a safe and um, relaxed space for individuals to come together to explore their questions, raise issues, and importantly, to consider actions uh, that they can get enthusiastic about. A climate cafe could be used to invite parents or other members of the school or the local community to to engage in discussions about how they could support the actions that they decide upon. We encourage all learners to be like the golden eagle. Focusing on one action and aiming high. That's the important bit. All of us can make some changes, but just focus on one and make it actually happen. Now we're coming to the end of our time now and I'd like to thank Manon so much for joining me today. It's been fantastic having you with me and it was great to have Alex with us as well. Yes, it's been a pleasure. It's brilliant to have Alex from the BBC and of course all you learners out there. So thank you so much. Uh, and don't forget, we will be visiting another Frozen Planet Minecraft world on Thursday morning. So if you'd like to join us again at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning, get your teachers, nag your teachers to register so you can join us again. So bye for now, everyone. Bye.